Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to explore and review the three laws of Newton and how specifically how they're applied to specific problems. These are systems that are undergoing some forces and we're trying to find the acceleration of the whole system. The technique to use here is to really think about the system as one unit, one whole thing. We're not going to draw free body diagrams or anything like that. We're going to show you how to do that later in another video. But here we're simply going to look at each system as a whole quantity. And so what we're going to do is use this particular approach. Here we have a system of three masses attached to one another with strings and one force pulling them to the right. And presumably there'll be an acceler acceleration to the right. For the first example, we're going to assume that the friction is zero, or the coefficient of friction is zero, so there's no friction involved at all. And so after you draw the drawing and you indicate the force acting on the system and what the direction of acceleration would be and the expected direction of acceleration, sometimes you're not quite sure, you just pick a side, you say, okay, I think it will accelerate like this, and if you're wrong, you'll get a negative answer, so then you can redo it with a, a different direction. But the first thing you do is assume the direction of the acceleration, draw the diagram of what's going on, and now you need to identify all the other forces that exist there. So we have gravity acting on it, so we have M1g pointing downward here, we have M2g pointing down here, and we have M3g pointing down here. And then of course we have the normal forces, the surface pushing back in the opposite direction, so here we have N1, and then one will be equal to m1g. It'll be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction to the weight of the object. Here we have n2 pushing back, n2, which is equal to m2g, and here we have n3, which is equal to m3g. Now notice that these are three pairs of forces, a force down and a force up. They're equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, so essentially they cancel each other out. So those these two, and so those these two. So there's no effect on these forces, and besides, they're acting perpendicular to the assumed acceleration, so they can neither add nor detract from the acceleration. The only force left that can actually influence acceleration is this force right here. Now, if there was friction, then of course there would be friction forces pointing in the opposite direction, but in this case there's no friction. But the approach is going to be as follows. We know that F net, the net force acting on a system equals the total mass of the system times its acceleration, which then implies that acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the total mass. And the net force means all the forces in the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration, so this would be the forces aiding minus the forces opposing divided by the total mass, in this case there's three masses, so it would be m1 plus m2 plus m3. So now all we have to do is identify all the aiding forces, then identify all the opposing forces, subtract them from one another, divide by the total mass, and we get the acceleration. So here we have acceleration equals, the aiding force would be F, and the opposing forces, well there's no forces pointing in the opposite direction, so that would be zero, divided by the total mass. So simplified, that simply means it's the force applied divided by the total mass of the whole system, and that will give you the acceleration of this particular system. Now, what happens if there's friction? Well, then notice that there's going to be a friction force on the first mass, a friction force on the second mass, a friction force on the third mass, and by definition, the friction forces equal the normal force times mu. So let's say we have mu for all three, because we assume that's the same material and it's the same floor. So we can see then that there's three friction forces, one for the first mass, one for the second mass, one for the third mass, and all three of them point in the opposite direction for the acceleration. So these are opposing forces, while the pulling force is the aiding force. That means that the acceleration will be the aiding force minus the opposing force, which is F minus the three friction forces, the normal force M1g times mu, M2g times mu, M3g times mu, you subtract them from the aiding force, divide by the total mass, and that will give you the acceleration. What if we have something that's hanging like this, and there's a force pulling all three objects upward. Notice that the objects are connected to one another. Each one of them has a weight, M1g, M2g, M3g. These are the three forces acting downward, and the one force acting upward. If this force is bigger than the three weights of the three objects, 
then there will be an acceleration upwards. So let's assume it's bigger. So then we can say that the acceleration is equal to the aiding forces minus the opposing forces divided by the total mass. The force that aids is, is the force in the same direction as acceleration. The other three forces need to be subtracted because they're, they're in the opposite direction. They act in the opposite direction relative to acceleration. And you divide by the total mass to get the acceleration. What if we have something like this, a pulley, which is also called the Atwood machine. Let's say that the pulley has no mass and no friction. We have two masses hanging on either end. They're attached with a rope going over the pulley. And the mass on the right side appears to be bigger than the mass on the left side, which means that its weight is bigger than the one on the left side. So we can assume that the acceleration will be such that the small mass will be accelerated upward and the big mass will be accelerated downward. The magnitude of acceleration for both objects will be the same. The direction is different, but the magnitude will be the same. So again, we can use the same principle that the acceleration is equal to the aiding force minus the opposing force divided by the total mass. The aiding force is going to be the force in the same direction as acceleration. M2g acts in the same direction as acceleration. Notice that M1g acts in the opposite direction. You know, I say, well, wait a minute. M1g also acts downward and A. No, no, we have to think about M1 will be accelerating upward, M2 will be accelerating downward. So if M1 accelerates upward, then M1g pulls in the opposite direction to the acceleration for the system, for this part of the system. But since they're connected, they're essentially a whole system. This force pulls both of these objects to try to make them accelerate this way. This force causes them to accelerate this way. If this is bigger, it will accelerate this way. So this is in the opposite direction to the assumed acceleration. So we get M2g minus M1g divided by the total mass simplified. That will give us acceleration as shown. And so here's four simple examples. Now we're going to show you some additional examples that get more and more complicated. But again, the approach will be exactly the same. It always be, will be F net equals mass total times acceleration. All the internal forces are ignored. Notice we ignore the tension inside the system because th those do not add to the acceleration of the system. They just keep the system together. We only consider forces that act on the system from the outside such as gravity acting from the outside on the three objects and the force acting on the three objects pulling them upward. So internal forces are ignored, only external forces are considered and we'll show that in the other examples as well. And that is how it's done.